Well, folks, it's coming. Royal Caribbean International's next new biggest cruise ship in the world, in the form of Icon of the Seas, is coming. And we at Popular Cruising have a super detailed preview of the ship here for you. I'm your host, Jason Leppert, and here are all the latest imagery and neighborhood and venue details we know thus far. At 250,800 tons and a maximum capacity of 7,600 guests, this next 20-deck tall behemoth will be nothing short of massive. And it is already well underway, going from renderings to reality, ahead of its scheduled January 2024 launch. Just briefly, if you haven't already done so, we invite you to please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to be notified when all our latest videos are posted. First on Deck 3, we've got the return of the Double Decker Music Hall. And normally I wouldn't point this out, but look how cool even Icon of the Seas elevators are going to be. Rather than be stuck between parallel facing cars that are sometimes hard to see when they arrive, these will be oriented in the round. And of course, the main dining room is a towering triple decker variety again as on previous ships. There will be plenty of space for patrons to roam about Music Hall when bands take to the stage. This one reminds me a bit of the club on Celebrity Cruise's Edge class of ships, as you'll see several more spaces coming up that take their cues from Royal Caribbean's corporate cousin as well. And the simply titled Dining Room will once again be a complimentary venue. On Deck 4 will be the start of the Royal Theater, but not much has been revealed yet. Casino Royale, on the other hand, has been rendered more. And like the elevators, how interesting is that that icon will also feature escalators. The last time I remember seeing one of those on a ship was back on Celebrity's Since Retired Century class. And behind the dining room will be a signature ice skating rink at the stern. In greater detail, Casino Royale is looking quite classy in these computer images, including its array of gaming and sparkling central bar. And called Absolute Zero on Icon will be the ship's ice arena, in the round now, much like the elevators, which is said will let the skaters gain greater speeds around the perimeter for even grander performances. On Deck 5, there's the return of Spotlight Karaoke as part of the next iteration of the Royal Promenade, which will showcase the new Pearl, as well as the fresh 1400 Lobby Bar right across the way, and the Point and Feather Pub. Spotlight Karaoke will of course be where guests can take to the stage themselves and sing to their heart's content. And said Pearl has been teased for some time now as a sort of structural art installation with moving tiles. It all seems very abstract to us at the moment, but it does exist in the real world and will likely feature into the ship's roster of entertainment. When you're ready to book your icon of the Seas Cruise, we recommend doing so through our sponsor, Fairy Godmother Travel, who will magically take care of all your trip planning absolutely for free. To get your complimentary quote, click on the link right here, or call the phone number or message the email address below. More to find, meanwhile, is Pearl Cafe, which is a fine example of how the ship will better emphasize its surroundings and what looks to take the place of Cafe Promenade on previous Oasis-class ships. 1400 Lobby Bar will be another scenic venue with a lovely alfresco element, while Point and Feather will continue with its classic traditions. And Sorrentos will be along for the ride as well, hopefully with better pizzas than Royal's usual mediocre pies. On Deck 6, Dueling Pianos will be new to the line, also newly accessible from an upper pedestrian level of the Royal Promenade, and Schooner Bar will additionally be reprised. Towards the stern will again be the popular Playmakers Sports Bar and Arcade, as well as the newly located Kids and Teens facilities. Looking closer at Dueling Pianos, the venue appears quite lively and will no doubt entice plenty of sing-alongs, as well as audience suggestions for songs to be performed. And also not to be forgotten is the return of The Attic, for stand-up comedy sets as an appropriate pairing to the live pianos. I'm happy to see the nautical schooner bar still holding strong to the latest Royal Caribbean ship, although potentially less model adorned. Here's hoping the scale sailing ships still make a showing. Boleros will also be a favorite to be carried forward with its live music and dance floor, and Playmakers will resemble the rest of the fleet's hometown sports bar vibe, with tasty bites and brews to match. Interesting this time is the location of Adventure Ocean, much lower in the ship instead of up high, the same of which is true for the teens only space both of which you'll see are there because of their proximity to a new neighborhood on Icon. Not only does Deck 7 highlight a new interior plus stateroom category, but also the new Surfside. Instead of the boardwalk and the Oasis class ships, here is a new neighborhood dedicated to families, including Splashaway Bay and the new Water's Edge, plus the expansive three-story Ultimate Family Townhouse. And fear not, because the Aqua Theater formerly located here has been repositioned, as you'll soon see. But for now, take a look at this super neat Ultimate Family Townhouse with direct access to Surfside. As in such previous suites, the new 1,772 square foot variety will have outstanding wraparound views, as well as its own spiral dry slide, and room for up to eight occupants with VIP perks, and lots of bedrooms, bathrooms, and certainly play areas. And this one can now be seen as under construction at the shipyard. 
Available to all families icon will naturally be aforementioned Water's Edge, which is a sort of infinity pool, the Splash Away Bay Kitty Water Park, and the Lemon Post Bar for adult and child-friendly beverages. A sea-themed carousel will also be featured, as is currently being playtested, but apparently there will be no Johnny Rockets this time around, instead going with the Surfside Eatery Buffet, bites like burgers and popcorn chicken, and definitely its very own arcade. Accommodations overlooking the neighborhood will also include the new Surfside Family Suite, capable of sleeping two adults and two kids, and a 269 square foot stateroom with fun nooks and crannies and a 53 square foot courtyard balcony. Or Family Infinite Balcony staterooms will be the first to show infinite style verandas, carried over again from Celebrity Cruises, for seating that goes all the way to the edge, plus family-friendly split bathrooms, originally introduced to cruising by Royal Caribbean's mousy competitor, and then a cool bunk bedroom behind. Meanwhile, returning to said interior plus cabins will be an expanded iteration, with larger closet storage as part of its 157 square feet. Heading upstairs to Deck 8 will be a new take on the line's famed Central Park, including an Empire Supper Club, newly located Izumi Hibachi and Sushi, Fresh Bubble Champagne Bar, Parkside Loose Jazz and Blues, and more. The open-air Central Park, complete with lush foliage, will look much the same as it has before, but with inward-facing infinite balconies above, and even the Pearl emerging in the space. All new will also be the Empire Supper Club, displaying timeless New York charm and pairing a three-piece band with eight courses of upscale American cuisine, like caviar or wagyu. Chop's Grill, the Lion's Classic Steakhouse, will of course be another dining option off Central Park as before, as well as the returning Trellis Bar. But new to the neighborhood will be what is now being called Izumi in the Park for a sit-down experience, as well as all-day takeaway items. Park Cafe will still be a complimentary option, even into the evenings with tapas. And Bubbles will be a champagne bar for the first time along Central Park. Also in this neighborhood, Lou's Jazz and Blues will feature even more great live music that is sure to spill into the park itself. And who doesn't love a great live combo? Next, jumping up to Deck 15 is where things only continue to develop with the new Aqua Dome neighborhood and the repositioned Aqua Theater, its own food hall, and the start of the Chill Island Resort-style pool decks, and the hideaway, yet another neighborhood suspended high over the stern. I'm particularly excited to see that the Aqua Dome, being climate-controlled this time around versus solariums in the past, looks to be one of the greatest ever observation lounges with fun-looking seating pods perched up high, and even viewports into the Aqua Theater tank. All of which is being installed as we speak. And how cool is the new Aqua Theater with a central waterfall oculus? And another instance of in-the-round seating and uninterrupted sight lines to incredible aerialists, divers, and synchronized swimmers. That tubular waterfall is already testing nicely. And the theater itself is nearing completion as soon staged awesome new aqua shows. Also featured within the Aqua Dome neighborhood is the new Ryan Bean. For traditional coffees and even coffee-based cocktails, an Aqua Dome market will be the line's first ever food hall with five stalls featuring Mediterranean, Asian, sweet and savory crepes, specialty mac and cheese, and sandwiches and salads. Celebration Table at the Aqua Dome will additionally be a reservable 12-seat VIP venue with varied menus for special occasions, and turning to Chill Island is another really neat carryover from Celebrity Cruises in the form of an asymmetrical deck design, like first at the Cove Pool, where a cantilevered plunge variety will hang off the side of the ship for spectacular views, or the more traditional Royal Bay Pool on the opposite side. And the hideaway is its own neighborhood at the back of the ship with the first suspended infinity pool at sea. With as much happening above it as you'll see from Thrill Island, I only hope there isn't an excessive amount of noise pollution here. Time of course will tell. In either case, that does make for one heck of a sunset view. Up a level on Deck 16 are Ocean View Panoramic Suites as another new category. 
Plus, Swimmintonic is a unique swim-up bar at sea that is also part of Chill Island, and the first parts of Thrill Island, such as the Crown's Edge Ropes Course and the Tamer by comparison, Lost Dunes Mini Golf Course. Swim and Tonic will definitely be the place to beat the heat with a drink in hand while waiting in cooling waters, or alternatively, the toastier whirlpool. It definitely makes for an interesting architectural element as well, with so many areas overlooking Central Park below. But perhaps the most striking example of just hanging out there is Crown's Edge, where Icon's ropes course will wrap around the oversized Crown and Anchor logo, before the floor drops out and the course becomes a bit of a roller coaster ride. As seen here in full-scale testing. Or a more traditional Royal Caribbean fashion, Adrenaline Peak will be the line's popular inclusion of a rock climbing wall, just below from which will be base camp for bites and beverages in between adventures, as well as deserted, a fun play on words there, for specialty topped off milkshake creations. And miniature golf will return as a calmer alternative to the high adrenaline activities. Private accommodations wise on this level will also be Ocean View Panoramic Suites, which actually will sit behind the aquadome itself for unique floor to ceiling views upwards of 440 square feet in size. Similarly available elsewhere will be Panoramic Ocean View Staterooms, with comparable views but a smaller 258 square foot area, and not unlike the family variety shown before, are smaller, infinite ocean view balcony staterooms for regular double occupancy, but with the same welcome riverboat-like windows that open to become a makeshift veranda railing. And even the cabins are all in full production, along an assembly line of construction for the bathroom modules and more, before being swung into place with furnishings already installed, to then slide on board their Icon of the Seas home, Meanwhile, Deck 17 is where the Sweet Guest exclusive Coastal Kitchen restaurant is found, as well as even more of the largest accommodations on board. There's also the Cloud 17 portion of Chill Island just for adults. Pool does look mighty inviting, especially with its own lime and coconut bar ready to serve drinks. But even more amazing are the Icon Loft Suites that will be privately available to passengers. Measuring it at 138 square feet, there sure is a lot of vaulted space here to go around, for up to four guests. Or another category of suites, located off the back of the ship, are Sunset Corner Suites, ranging from 380 to 480 square feet in size, and offering such promised vistas as these. And speaking of the restaurant only for suite guests, Coastal Kitchen will be enhanced with its own unique views, like those of the Central Aqua Theater and its performances. Perhaps for another type of dinner show if the timing is just right. I for one would sure love to dine here. How about you? Finishing up collectively with decks 18, 19, and 20 is also the Grove Suite Sun Deck the largest Royal Loft Suite on board, an extension of the Suite Sun Deck, and last but certainly not least, the seriously impressive Category 6 water park of Thrill Island. This flyover shows not only how some of the staterooms and suites will be positioned behind the glass of the Aquadome, but also the Grove Suite Sun Deck itself, complete with a lovely balance of sunbathing space and sheltered seclusion And of course it's on pool. But surprisingly not hot tubs. At least from what we can see rendered here. But perhaps that's because the Royal Loft Suite has its own real pool as part of its wraparound balcony deck. Among its two levels, which amount to 2,088 square feet worth of space, for up to six guests, including an upper master bedroom and seating perch, that sit above a massive living and dining room with even its own piano. Yeah, that, uh, that will do just nicely, I think. And rounding out everything we have already seen is the visually busy, yes, but nonetheless awesome Category 6 water park, where a Royal Caribbean favorite flow rider will be included, as well as a whopping six water slides. And this sinuous display of vibrant color will be pressure drop 66 degree inclined open freefall slide Frightening Bolt, the tallest drop slide at sea at 46 feet tall, Storm Surge and Hurricane Hunter Family Raft Slides, and Storm Chasers Pair of Matte Racing Slides. 
Plus, there will even be a sports court up here for basketball and more. And what's amazing is that all of this will be on a cruise ship. As is currently under construction. Putting all the details into place and testing each and every element, from signage and said rafts, to drink carts and other oversized props. I for one cannot wait to see all of this once it actually sets sail. I mean, just look at everything that is going on in this one image alone. As all the activities stretch from day into night. Soon we'll all have the opportunity to board this behemoth of the seas. I'm still waiting for Royal Caribbean to actually call one of them that, by the way. But at least this first one in the class is called Icon of the Seas. How about you? Are you planning a cruise vacation on the next big thing at sea? Thanks so much for watching! If you would, as it really does help support us, please like this video with a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel while hitting that bell icon to be notified of new videos, watch our other ones, and visit popularcruising.com.